The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Methods. Methods are functions that are associated with a particular type. Classes, structures, and enumerations can all define instance methods, which encapsulate specific tasks and functionality for working with an instance of a given type. Classes, structures, and enumerations can also define type methods, which are associated with the type itself. Type methods are similar to class methods in Objective-C. The fact that structures and enumerations can define methods in Swift is a major difference from C and Objective-C. In Objective-C, classes are the only types that can define methods. In Swift, you can choose whether to define a class, structure, or enumeration and still have the flexibility to define methods on the type you create. Instance methods are functions that belong to instances of a particular class, structure, or enumeration. They support the functionality of those instances either by providing ways to access and modify instance properties or by providing functionality related to the instance's purpose. Instance methods have exactly the same syntax as functions as described in functions. You write an instance method within the opening and closing braces of the type it belongs to. An instance method has implicit access to all other instance methods and properties of that type. An instance method can be called only on a specific instance of the type it belongs to. It cannot be called in isolation without an existing instance. This is an example that defines a simple counter class, which can be used to count the number of times an action occurs. The counter class defines three instance methods. Increment increments the counter by one. Increment by increments the counter by a specified integer amount. Reset resets the counter to zero. The counter class also declares a variable property count to keep track of the current counter value. You call instance methods with the same dot syntax as properties. Function parameters can have both a name for use within the function's body and an argument label for use when calling the function, as described in function argument labels and parameter names. The same is true for method parameters because methods are just functions that are associated with a type. The self property. Every instance of a type has an implicit property called self, which is exactly equivalent to the instance itself. You use the self property to refer to the current instance within its own instance methods. The increment method in the prior example could have been written like this. In practice, you do not need to write self in your code very often. If you do not explicitly write self, Swift assumes that you are referring to a property or method of the current instance whenever you use a known property or method name within a method. This assumption is demonstrated by the use of count rather than self.count inside the three instance methods for a counter. The main exception to this rule occurs when a parameter name for an instance method has the same name as a property of that instance. In this situation, the parameter name takes precedence and it becomes necessary to refer to the property in a more qualified way. You use the self property to distinguish between the parameter name and the property name. Here, self disambiguates between a method parameter called x and an instance property that is also called x. Without the self prefix, Swift would assume that both uses of X referred to the method parameter called X. Modifying value types from within instance methods. Structures and enumerations are value types. By default, the properties of a value type cannot be modified from within its instance methods. However, if you need to modify the properties of your structure or enumeration within a particular method, you can opt into mutating behavior for that method. The method can then mutate, that is, change, its properties from within the method, and any changes that it makes are written back to the original structure when the method ends. The method can also assign a completely new instance to its implicit self property, and this new instance will replace the existing one when the method ends. You can opt into this behavior by placing the mutating keyword before the func keyword for that method. The point structure defines a mutating move by method, which moves a point instance by a certain amount. Instead of returning a new point, this method actually modifies the point on which it is called. The mutating keyword is added to its definition to enable it to modify its properties. 
Note that you cannot call a mutating method on a constant of structure type because its properties cannot be changed even if they are variable properties as described in stored properties of constant structure instances. Assigning to self within a mutating method. Mutating methods can assign an entirely new instance to the implicit self property. The point example shown above could have been written in this way instead. This version of the mutating move by method creates a new structure whose X and Y values are set to the target location. The end result of calling this alternative version of the method will be exactly the same as for calling the earlier version. Mutating methods for enumerations can set the implicit self parameter to be a different case of the same enumeration. This example defines an enumeration for a three state switch. The switch cycles between three different power states, off, low, and high every time its next method is called. Type methods. Instance methods, as described above, are methods that you call on an instance of a particular type. You can also define methods that are called on the type itself. These kinds of methods are called type methods. You indicate type methods by writing the static keyword before the method's func keyword. Classes can use the class keyword instead to allow subclasses to override the superclasses implementation of that method. Note, in Objective-C, you can define type-level methods only for Objective-C classes. In Swift, you can define type-level methods for all classes, structures, and enumerations. Each type method is explicitly scoped to the type it supports. Type methods are called with dot syntax, like instance methods. However, you call type methods on the type, not on an instance of that type. Here is how you call a type method on a class called some class. Within the body of a type method, the implicit self property refers to the type itself rather than an instance of that type. This means that you can use self to disambiguate between type properties and type method parameters, just as you do for instance properties and instance method parameters. More generally, any unqualified method and property names that you use within the body of a type method will refer to other type level methods and properties. A type method can call another type method with the other method's name without needing to prefix it with the type name. Similarly, type methods on structures and enumerations can access type properties by using the type properties name without a type name prefix. This example defines a structure called level tracker, which tracks a player's progress through the different levels or stages of a game. It is a single player game, but can store information for multiple players on a single device. All of the game's levels, apart from level one, are locked when the game is first played. Every time a player finishes a level, that level is unlocked for all players on the device. The level tracker structure uses type properties and methods to keep track of which levels of the game have been unlocked. It also tracks the current level for an individual player. The level tracker structure keeps track of the highest level that any player has unlocked. This value is stored in a type property called highest unlocked level. Level Tracker also defines two type functions to work with the highest unlocked level property. The first is a type function called Unlock, which updates the value of highest unlocked level whenever a new level is unlocked. The second is a convenience type function called IsUnlocked, which returns true if a particular level number is already unlocked. Note that these type methods can access the highest unlock level type property without your needing to write it as level tracker dot highest unlock level. In addition to its type property and type methods, level tracker tracks an individual player's progress through the game. It uses an instance property called current level to track the level that a player is currently playing. To help manage the current level property, level tracker defines an instance method called advance to. Before updating current level, this method checks whether the requested new level is already unlocked. The advance to method returns a Boolean value to indicate whether it was actually able to set current level. Because it is not necessarily a mistake for code that calls the advance to method to ignore the return value, this function is marked with the discardable result attribute. For more information about this attribute, see attributes. The level tracker structure is used with the player class shown here to track and update the progress of an individual player. The player class creates a new instance of level tracker to track that player's progress. It also provides a method called complete level, which is called whenever a player completes a particular level. 
This method unlocks the next level for all players and updates the player's progress to move them to the next level. The Boolean return value of Advance 2 is ignored because the level is known to have been unlocked by the call to level, level tracker dot unlock on the previous line. You can create an instance of the player class for a new player and see what happens when the player completes level 1. If you create a second player whom you try to move to a level that is not yet unlocked by any player in the game, the attempt to set the player's current level fails.